am back. It's another part of this uh, video. I am doing part two of this. Hopefully we can just finish it up today. Welcome or welcome back. My channel is Reads with Rachel. And sometimes I talk about fundamentalist Christians. Sometimes I talk about abortion and other facets of reproductive rights because uh, that is a passion of mine. I did not grow up this way. I grew up fundy. So now I am going against everything that was taught to me in my schools and by my parents. With that out of the way yesterday, I know that I'm wearing the same thing as yesterday. You don't have to bring it up. I know that. This is what depression looks like. Bask in it. Yeah, so yesterday we did part one of this. Uh, I'm a little, oh, that's not halfway. That's 38, not 30. Oh, I have more than halfway to go. I'll try not to talk so much, but um, somebody pointed out to me that yesterday I missed um, the part where it essentially compared abortion to the Holocaust. And before I say anything else, I want to note how absolutely fucked that is because that is so, I mean, to put it lightly disrespectful, but the thing about if you actually uh, research the Holocaust, you'll find a lot of very human stories of people doing extraordinary things in the most. And one of those extraordinary humans was a doctor who was in one of the camps during the Holocaust. And she was uh, forced to work with Dr. Joseph Mengele. And part of what she did was um, hiding when people People were pregnant because pregnant people were experimented on uh, or just killed outright. And unfortunately, people became pregnant while being uh, forced to live in the camps. And this was due to sexual assault. And what part of what she did was she would um, help the people who found out that they were pregnant. She would, um, this is very graphic, but she would give abortions by hand because they did not want to be pregnant. They could not be pregnant in the circumstances that they were in which is their right, was their right. And to compare abortion to the Holocaust without talking about the extremely human stories, the things that happened to the people who were actually pregnant there is so, I, I don't I don't know how to even describe that. I, I truly don't know how to even describe that. To compare the experiences of those who, who went through that, some of whom needed abortions and some of whom had to provide them by hand to abortion itself is so utterly grotesque to me. Is, is so utterly devastating to, to see and hear. I don't know how I missed that they, they said that, but I must have blinked. It's, I don't, I don't even know how to, to, to grapple with that. And it's not the first time I've come across that. It's just that this has been shared to 2 million people at this point. And the fact that 2 million people, possibly children, have now seen somebody compare abortion, which is a medical procedure, to the Holocaust, which was the Holocaust. I, I don't know how to even, I, I can't even talk about that in a nature other than being so utterly horrified like I don't I don't know how to talk about that in like a very like academic perspective because it's so awful and just feels so disgusting to have to say you cannot compare those things uh, another group of people that do this are vegans uh, I used to be vegan and there is a holocaust survivor I'm not sure if he's still alive now but he was a few years ago when I was still vegan he says that yes what animals are going through is a holocaust and I understand that that is his right to say that as a survivor. However, vegans should not take that and feel as if it is their right to say what factory farm animals are going through is similar to the Holocaust that killed millions of Jewish and Roma and Sinti people, among others. That is grotesque. It is a disgusting thing to say, whether you are talking about abortion or you are talking about animal rights. You don't say that. It's, it's horrible. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if they say that again, I'm going to be upsetty spaghetti because that's just disgusting. Um, where we left off yesterday was, I guess the guy's name is Cole. And somebody told me in the comments of yesterday's video that apparently he said some like really weird, almost pedophilic shit about somebody's daughter when they were three, which is gross. Uh, no, thank you. This is his mother. And she is talking about how her mom gave her up for adoption. And um, then she had a child very young. And naturally, you know, one person circumstances are everyone's circumstances <laughs> instead of like allowing people to be unique and human in their own you know we have to apply everybody's circumstances across the board of course of course all right let's start this shit the um the the young man that got me pregnant and his um dad really wanted me to get an abortion and um really was set up to force me to have an abortion and uh, as far as i know it was planned and they were there to put me in the car and take me and my daddy 
and he ran them out of the yard and made them get back in their car and um, wouldn't let me go with them. And so my daddy took care of me and I had my beautiful little girl. So I was 17 when she was born and we kind of grew up together. I was never sorry. I was never sorry. E even though I was pregnant without being married, I just was never sorry. And the minute you hold that baby and look at that baby, everything that you went through that was scary, it just goes away, you know, it goes away. Since this is a book channel, um, I am going to recommend a book. Her circumstances, hard as they were, are not everyone's circumstances, as I just said. There is an entire book about people's circumstances who could explain this to you better than I can. I have done a video on this. Um, it's called The Girls Who Went Away by Ann Fessler. Back in the day before Roe v. Wade, uh, so in the 1960s and before, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of girls who got pregnant um, before they were 18 and they were not married. And oh this is so hard to talk about and their families were not supportive in fact their families were part of a system of abuse that included their families their churches churches were extremely involved in this back in the day in fact um what would happen was these girls would be sent by their families to homes typically run by churches they would be forced to carry to term um in a lot of cases they were not allowed to use their real names um and they would be forced to live amongst each other and were uh put through classes where they were told you can't raise your baby you can't raise your baby and what would happen is basically it was like similar to the handmaid's tale where these girls were told you are basically an incubator and you have to sign away your right to parent and you need to give up your infant to a couple who can raise it better than you can and this was a system of abuse that happened for decades and it's horrible a similar thing that happened was the magdalene homes which were worse in many ways in ireland so so her case, I'm glad that she had her dad to be there for her. A lot of people don't. And that's why we cannot make blanket statements about what people should do instead of abortion. Uh, because not everybody has a family that will that will back them. I'll forever be grateful for my granny's decision. If my grandma did not decide to keep my mom, not only would I not be here, oh, it's his mom. but my kids wouldn't be here. Grandma's. What? It's his, it's his mom's mom. And one day, my kids' kids, and my kids' kids' kids, and so on. Saying I really wish that he would stop showing their children. Um, they're cute kids. Nothing against these kids. I'm not mad at these kids for like being, you know, raised Christian or raised anti-abortion. I am upset that their parents are using them as a tool to be anti-abortion. Like <laughs> similar to like how Ron DeSantis took his kids yesterday up on like a political platform and, and were like, you know, trying to use them to, to pander to voters. I'm really uncomfortable with that. I brought my kid on here yesterday yesterday to ask a question what you know what he thought a fetus was like when I showed the fetus that they were showing and I said hey what is that because he's five because I wanted to prove a point that that only works if you are a certain age because you can be emotionally manipulated <laughs> uh, because that thing to him does not look like an infant right and he knows what an infant is so I did bring my kid on here yesterday how is this different because um this is trying to get people to not have abortions by saying look how cute my kid is like it's weird it's uncomfortable i don't like it uh, that's why i'm not showing their faces i don't like it i wish he would stop yes to keeping your baby affects so much more than you could ever imagine it's so important to rally around these women in a time where they feel so vulnerable oh, um, in my granny's case on. it was her dad who was able to chase off these men and i'm thankful for my great granddad who i never even got to meet because if he didn't chase them off i wouldn't be here so there's so many little pieces that we just need to rally around these women to remind other people's pregnancies are not about you i talked about yesterday about my great grandmother and how she gave up my grandpa for adoption i should not center myself there i am glad that i exist sure but my grandpa's pain was my grandpa's pain and it is not validated just because I exist. That was a lifelong horrible thing he went through where he was abandoned and never knew why and never found his family. So my existence, even my kid's existence, does not somehow negate the trauma that my grandpa went through from the day he was born until the day he died. So to just be like, play some happy music over it and be like, look, I exist now, so everything's fine. That's that's kind of shitty. That's really shitty. I know, even if it's just one person saying, hey, you can do this. Hey, I'm here with you. It's going to be okay. Yeah. We found a ministry called Embrace Grace, and this is exactly what Here they do every single day. Amy Ford, the founder, is determined to help scared pregnant women be brave. This is the same in the church, um, the abortion rate is exactly the same inside the church as it is outside the church. There's no difference. So these women are sitting in our pews and scared, don't really know what to do. And, and even with my own story, I went to church every single week. I did it not cross my mind that 
I'm pregnant, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll go to the church and ask for wisdom, guidance, prayer, support, yeah. something. Like it's the last place you wanna to go to. So we started Embrace Grace as a pro-love movement where we want the church to be one of the first places a girl runs to instead of the last because of shame and guilt. Yeah. Um, we want the church to be like an oasis and a sanctuary for these. Who created and perpetuates the shame and guilt? If you sit in your church every week and you tell people that they need to support anti-choice candidates and that abortion is bad, you you are not creating a pro love environment. I don't like. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen if you sit there and be anti abortion? Then the people who need abortions are going to know that you're not safe. This is stupid. These women that if they're scared and they don't really know what to do, then we want the church to be a safe place for them. And then also, you know, if they end up choosing abortion, we don't want them to. But if they do, we believe the church should be a safe place for them too. To go to. Damn. Okay. So I love being proved wrong. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. I hope that that does not mean that they're doing what CPCs do in that um, I'll pull up a CPC for you right now, actually, and show that, um, okay, here's a CPC. I just pulled it up. This is Lighthouse Pregnancy Resource Center. I don't know where this is at. 201. Isn't that Connecticut? Anyway, um, so they always look like typical medical places. They're not. Um, they normally look like this. They use stock photos like this. For some reason, they use a lot of people of color in their stock photos. Gee, I wonder why. And they, they have the same old shit on their website, right? And what they they typically do is you can tell if they are connected to a church when they say things like uh, spiritual consequences. Hold on, I'll find it. Abortion can have significant emotional and psychological consequences. Here it is. There is also a spiritual side to abortion that deserves to be considered. Uh, notice that there are zero sources cited here. That's because um, how can you cite a, a spiritual source? But uh, emotional and psychological consequences, that's categorically false. 95% of people who uh, have an abortion do not regret their abortions, and that includes later on in life. There was a long-term study done on that. I'm not saying that abortion never has emotional or psychological consequences. It, it does, but any pregnancy does. Any pregnancy. Um, I have long-term emotional and psychological consequences for my pregnancies that went to term as well as my pregnancies that ended in miscarriage. So anytime you're pregnant, typically um, you're going to feel some kind of way about it. So like to say that but then if I go to their their shit on actual pregnancy they're not going to say the same thing they're going to say it's such a great choice do this this is the best option there's no psychological consequences there's no emotional consequences spiritually this is your best choice like this is this is so manipulative anyway I fucking hate crisis pregnancy centers continue as well for healing and for uh, healing support groups but we started Embrace Grace and it's for women with unexpected pregnancies to find hope community support they meet other girls going through the same thing that they are um, their are support groups all over the nation so any church can just press play and have this digital amazing curriculum and then pregnancy centers or even just word of mouth they send these girls that are there struggling with an unexpected pregnancy and then they get to they, they're not alone anymore they feel um, heard they feel loved and they meet other girls going i want to say real quick before i continue if you are feeling um alone if you are feeling um shame and regret and pain over abortion i will um just if if you're going through that leave a comment down below and you can contact me there is a group that is on facebook that is is excellent for that. Um, whether you are experiencing regret or you are experiencing um, joy because you're glad to be free of a pregnancy that you could not continue with. If you need a, a resource group for that, there's a great group on Facebook that I'm a part of that I really appreciate for that. So if you need that, let me know and, and you can reach out to me. The same thing that they are. They might all have super unique stories, but they all come together with this common bond of not expecting to be in the situation that they're in right now. After a conversation with Amy, we were just so encouraged and blown away by all the resources available. In fact, you can actually click the link in the top of our description box down below, type in your zip code, and just get involved right away. So what if you're pursuing your dreams, your career, you're going to school, and then an unexpected pregnancy happens? What do you do? What if you are with an abusive partner? What if you have abusive parents? What if you have medical complications? What if you have mental health complications? And on and on and on. What if you have these and some of them overlap? And on and on. What if you have other kids and they have disabilities? What What if you just can't be pregnant? And on and on and on and on and on. So we actually got to sit down with Shanice, who was faced with those exact same circumstances and this is what she did I didn't really grow up in the church um, I started you know having a relationship with God probably like 14 15 but it became real for me um, and then I ended up moving to you know Texas about eight years ago and so while I was here you know I just I started to feel like lonely in a lonely season um, you know, there was a lot of things that happened since I had moved to Texas. You know, at one point, I was in a homeless shelter for a few months. You know, I just started showing out, talking to all the guys, you know. One of my, my good friends, she was in college, I was coming back from her thing that she had going on. And I just felt so sick. I'm the type of person that, like, I'm not going to wait it out. I need to know what's going on right then and there. So I went to the emergency room. 
I remember the doctor just came on out like it was just normal. He was like, oh, you're sick because you're pregnant. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And so I remember just, you know, crying. I don't even remember not crying. I just cried the whole time I was there. And then, you know, I just sat in the car, just literally sat in the car in tears. And like, I just remember, sorry, I'm just so annoying. <laughs> so I just remember like, just like looking at my phone and just like looking up, you know, you know, like abortions and stuff like that, like places where I should go and like how much it costs. And I just remember um, my eyes being so watery that I could like barely read like what it said because I was just so sad. Um, you know, what are people gonna think? Like, what is my mom and them gonna think? I remember going to like a pregnancy center. I remember they had like an 11 box and it was from Embrace Grace. And inside of it, it had um, like a onesie for my, for my boy. And um, it also had like a, a necklace, like little invitation to get a necklace. And it was like a pro love necklace. It was so sweet. It was like a lot of love and it really made me feel so special. You know, the day. Listen, um, oh man, I don't know why I, I get so emotional. I, I'm glad for her. Very, very much so. Like, I'm glad that she was in a position where it was a choice, where it was like, I can weigh both options. Um, I think that the emotional manipulation is kind of gross, but I'm glad that it worked out for her. I am. Again, it does not mean that it's going to work out for everybody. When I was in the car and I felt hopeless, and when God said, I trust, you know, trust me. He had already had Embrace Grace lined up. He's so good. You know, they had like baby showers for us and it was beautiful because it was gifts and all these things. Like my son didn't need anything. God took care of me completely. God was just providing. He was answering the prayer that he said he was gonna do that night in the car when I felt by myself. And he I, I think that that's great. And um, the thing is that the church should be meeting that need for those who can carry to term again, those who can do that. But it is beyond just giving gifts. Um, one of the most awful pro-life people, anti-choice people, is Abby Johnson, uh, who used to work for Planned Parenthood. I'm sure you've heard of her. She said at one point, um, if I can find it, I'll play the clip here. If I were to open a pregnancy center, I would not have pregnancy items past six months. Are we running a charity? Are we running a place where we want women to become self-sufficient? Self-sufficient, right? Have maternity clothes, have those things available for the women while they're pregnant, but cut them off. Basically saying that, yeah, we, we want to give them gifts while they're pregnant, but we need to stop after about six months. <laughs> Why is that? I mean, the thing is that they want typically babies born, right? Afterwards, we need to be doing lifelong advocacy for people, period. Not just pregnant people so that they carry pregnancy to, to term. We need to be doing lifelong adv advocacy for people. That means housing people and advocating for paid child childcare expenses and advocating for food and advocating for better pay. All of these things so that people who do have the choice but just need more necessities can get them. And the church can meet that need, but not if your only goal is to end abortion. <laughs> if you want that, then advocate for sex ed. That's the only thing that's proven to work. He's been doing it ever since because, you know, one of the things that Embrace Grace, you know, say they have a lot of things that they say, you know, like pro-love, help her be brave, stuff like that. But one thing that they say that I don't think people really grasp is you can have your baby and your dreams too and I feel like that's one of those things that people hear and they don't really understand what that means and so for me I feel like I'm a prime example of that me choosing to have my baby now I just launched my, my business and so not only am I you know a single mom that chose life but God is now transitioning me to being a boss chick and I love that so I launched my business in May it's called bomb moms and I love the name because it inspires me being a mom I'm actually gonna write that down because I love that she did that that's really fucking cool I'll go look that up later but again like this is not everybody's circumstances and being loving means acknowledging that and meeting people where they are I mean the things that moms go through and stuff like that and I make luxury um, handmade bath bombs oh, and so it's yeah. something so simple giving people opportunity just to relax and feel valuable feel hell taken yeah. care of because that is what God wants us to feel and that you really can honestly have your you know, baby and your dreams too we absolutely loved our conversation with Shanice. Her personality is just so infectious, and we know she's just gonna go on to do such incredible things. She's already doing incredible things. She's the perfect example of being able to have your baby oh God, and your dreams too. She's pursuing this bomb mom's career, and we just wanted to invest into that and so into her because she's doing it right now. Yeah. One story that stood out in particular was the story of Dana. She was homeless, living out of her car, raising her kids. Uh, I'm actually gonna link bomb moms down below because that actually looks really fucking cool, and I am all for supporting small businesses, especially when it comes to bath bombs. I love bath bombs. That's 
my shit. Do I love that she was uh, involved in this? No, but you know, a lot. Literally out of her car, and she was just in a tough spot. Life was really hard, and we just feel like if she can do it, then anybody can do it, and we really want you guys to hear the story for yourself. We had been sleeping in the car. You know, we had been, I had a, a Dodge Journey um, with a back, we had a back on it, so we had room to put bins of clothes in it. So you never know what things happen, you know? Just like I thought, I would never be homeless because I work, 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 and there, there it is, there's no money. So I, I, I just lost it all. The church who helped me um, with my pregnancy, they referred me to Embrace Grace. And um, I remember I went there and I was just, I was just so down. I mean, I'd never been this down in my life. And um, I started going to church and Embrace Grace and I, I never met these women, never. You know, they weren't high school friends of mine. They were just people that were there, that God put there in that place at that time that I needed, you know? And I went there and then the first day, I never seen love like that. People excited about you bringing in a baby, no matter what the circumstances was, you know? You don't have to be afraid because that's what I was pretty much, I was just so afraid. And my biggest thing is looking at my, my seven-year-old son that I did not know, like, how life would turn out. Me thinking that it, it could have been a possibility that he would not be here, that just breaks my heart. Because he is just, he was supposed to be here. He is funny, he is just, like, it was the last, like the last edition. It was just everything I needed to complete myself, you know? I, I couldn't imagine life without him. And to think that I would- I'm happy for her. I genuinely am. Um, however, other experiences exist. So for instance, uh, my youngest uh, would not be here if I had not had those miscarriages. So it's complicated feelings for me because if I had not had both of those traumatic and horrible miscarriages that traumatized me because I felt like my body had failed me. Oh no, I'm not going to cry. Twice. If I had not had those, then I would not have my kid who I love. So it's everybody's experiences are, are different. I have friends who had other children, older children, and then um, got pregnant and it was not the right time for them to have a another child. One of um, my older friends had a seizure disorder and was trying to figure out that health complication and got an abortion and then later on had another child years and years later. So everybody's experiences are different and in to blanket statement as if, you know, this is going to be everybody's experience is, is hurtful to those who will not have those experiences because it, it sort of dehumanizes them and their actual lived experiences. Would have been so selfish to think, you know, oh, I don't want to have another baby. Why? Because I'm so afraid. I like to shop. I like to do this. I like to do other things. I don't want to be a single parent tied down with another kid worrying about, you know, what the world, how they view me or how they judge me or, you know, look at me as, you know, but they, they don't know my story, you know? Like my kids are my rock in my world. And I, I just thank God that he put people in, in my life and in place and at the right time. So after hearing Dana's story, Savannah and I both just felt led to give her a gift. We weren't expecting to do that, but um, we were just so encouraged and motivated by her story that we knew that we had to act on this. So I just want to encourage you guys that if you ever felt led to help anybody in any way, even if it's not financially, you can help with your time. There was no reason for them to bring this up. They could have left out that entire thing. They could have just said, skip to this part where they're just like, if you ever feel like you want to help somebody, do it. They didn't need to be like, look, we did a nice thing. Like, ew, stop it. Time or anything, you should always act on that. Ew, they filmed giving her a check. I'm so uncomfortable right now. Here's $500. If you need help, or just somebody to talk to, keep in mind that pregnancy centers are located all throughout the country. Oh, These facilities no. are completely free. And are okay, this is going to be the part that really, if you thought I was mad before, this is going to be the part where I'm going to sit here fuming because I categorically fucking hate crisis pregnancy centers. I fucking hate them. I say that with no shame. Why? Because they lie. They lie to pregnant people and I think that that is a fucking crime. Filled with people that are dedicated and ready to help you figure out your next steps. From an ultrasound all the way to the diapers or food your baby might need. Yeah, uh, typically so a lot of, and I shouldn't say typically because I don't know statistically how often this happens, but the ones that I looked up in my area when I was doing research on crisis pregnancy centers for the other video that I did a long time ago, <laughs> the ones in my area, what they do is they make you attend classes. So you need to take off work and attend their classes in order to get points to pay for these things that they offer. I'm gonna just say, I don't know, they haven't said if that's how <laughs> that works here, but but that is a, a tactic that a lot of them employ and it's like okay so you're saying that like people need to still pay in order to get these things they need to take time off work they need to find childcare. they need to do xyz in order to get these things from you instead of just being like is this a need you have let's meet that need hate it, hate it. 
also um if they really wanted to help they could help them enroll in county programs um which i don't know that they don't but as far as i know every website i've ever looked at with crisis pregnancy centers they do not say we'll help you enroll in county programs county programs are so necessary i enrolled in them my kids are enrolled still now i've been enrolled for four years now and what they have done is send different things to my house um different things sorry different people to my house to help meet needs where i'm at at first i got six months of therapy in home which was amazing and uh shout out to jennifer my therapist because holy shit did she help me move through some huge things i wouldn't be where i am talking about fundies now on this channel if it had not been for jennifer helping me uh, move through a lot of spiritual abuse that i had experienced uh, at the hands of my families my churches and my schools so county programs y'all <laughs> uh, on top of that they help you enroll in WIC uh, they help you enroll in other things so my kids both have delays so they are eligible for certain county programs to go to preschool now my youngest is old enough and has been enrolled in preschool to help with his delays my oldest is has been in the program since he was three years old these are things that are extremely necessary and as far as I know as far as I have seen I have never seen a CPC say let's help you get enrolled in some county programs because typically <laughs> fundies are very much against government programs. However, they allow the government to help them run these places at no cost. I hate crisis pregnancy centers. This is all taxpayer dollar, by the way. Just remember, you are not alone. To think that there's so many of these places readily available to assist and help these women blows our minds, but we all need to step up and help because these places are um, free and just offering all these resources and they, and they run off of donations. I encourage you to get involved with the local pregnancy center to see how you can help potentially donate at these centers. One way that we felt led to help was actually to throw a baby shower for this girl named Gypsy. She was amazing, so sweet. We actually got a bunch of our friends, a bunch of the church to gather around her and throw her a baby shower and we actually fulfilled basically her entire registry. Good. This was just such a beautiful example of a community like coming together to love one person. And in fact, so many people say, well, if you can't do something for everybody, then I don't want to do anything for anybody. But what we want to say is we want to do everything for somebody, but we wish we could do for everybody. Yeah. And so it was just a beautiful orchestration of what we felt like to do for this one person and we want to do more of it. Yeah, and encourage us to do more. We want to encourage you to get involved, maybe not throw a baby shower if that's not what you're capable of, yeah. but you're capable of helping in some way. Yeah. Aside from Dr. Anthony Levitino, what would you say to a young woman who comes to you and says, I'm pregnant, I'm thinking about having an abortion, what do I do? Go to a crisis pregnancy center, pray. A caution for the audience. Understand that women who are contemplating abortion are being, are under tremendous stress. Oh, they are okay. worried about their education. They are worried about their finances. They don't want mom and dad to know she's been having sex with Johnny. Whatever it is that's driving her, there are powerful forces and powerful things within her mind driving her to consider an abortion. And it's very important when you're talking to someone in pregnancy who's contemplating an abortion to keep that in mind, to understand, to be empathetic about the tremendous stress that she's under. When those situations arise, I would do my best to understand her situation by talking with her, understand what was driving her to that decision. I understand that you're worried about finances, and I understand that you're worried about your education, and I understand that you're worried about the impact on your life in the future. I understand that you may not feel able to provide for your son or daughter in the future, but I want you to understand one thing. There is something that only you can give your son or daughter, and that is a chance to live, the very same chance that you have, to enjoy life. Only you can provide that to them. Don't be afraid. So you emotionally manipulate them into caring to term. Cool. Don't, do not be afraid. Don't let life scare you. And if you have God in front of you, there's nothing that can scare you. I know that this whole documentary is obviously centered around the mom and her baby, but obviously there's a father. There's a father somewhere. And I feel like in every one of these stories, the father was absent, the man was absent, and, and, and he's just not involved. He takes a back seat, takes a step back. It's just easier that way. You know, it's harder to take a step forward and say, wow, I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't ready, but I'm gonna be here with you. I'm gonna rally with you. It's already hard enough as is for a mom to do this, let alone being alone. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like as men, we need to step up. We need to rise to the occasion whenever something that maybe seems unfortunate and difficult at the time could come to be one of the greatest blessings in your life. After walking into Embrace Grace and talking with Amy Ford and seeing their team and, and hearing all the resources available, I just felt so encouraged and so relieved that yeah. like, wow, people are being the front runners. People yeah. are doing this. Because yeah. you, know, you, you think, why aren't people doing more? Why, why isn't there enough? Why yeah. isn't there this, this, and this? It's like, oh, people yeah. are doing this. Because yeah. you, know, you, you think, why aren't people doing more? Why, why isn't there enough? Why yeah. isn't there this, this, and this? It's like, oh, there is that. Why aren't people doing more? Why isn't there more enough? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, because we don't have politicians that advocate for that other than Bernie Sanders. <laughs>
and we don't have people who like these people they don't want to vote for somebody like that we have county programs we could make them national programs but the problem is that people don't, don't want that they don't want their tax dollars going to that they want their you know money going to religious organizations like cpcs they don't want to pay for paid maternity leave they don't want to pay for anything they they don't they don't want that y'all, y'all want to go volunteer for a day with some organization who's doing it and then you know back out and go to your normal life you don't want to consistently help people and meet them where they are that's not a thing that we i mean that's why social security is such a shit show in the united states because people don't value each other I know about it. yeah i didn't know about we it. just had no idea you know and i think that that's the problem is that people just don't know if mm-hmm. we didn't know and yeah. here we are making a documentary about it yeah. how do we expect teenagers or young moms or other people who just aren't even- they just admitted that this video is for teenagers just want to point that out i'm looking for these resources yeah. and what i really love about embrace grace is the community that you get like i thought that was so awesome they just get this community of moms that are going through the same exact thing that they are they get to talk about their struggles they get to help each other they're now friends just the community alone i feel like having that when you're newly pregnant and you're scared and there's so many things going through your head is so powerful for them and what's so cool is that they aren't just in this community whenever they're pregnant yeah they stay in this community for years and years yeah. and years and years after their pregnancy and, and then, then so many of these women go on them. to lead a group of their own yeah so it's just so cool to see a question we get faced with a lot when we talk about this is you only care about life inside the womb what about life outside the womb and, and i agree with that question i think it's a very valid question it's a question that that it makes us look into ourselves and say what are we doing for the life outside the womb because there is so much um you know there's an overburdened foster care system there's homelessness and there's all this stuff and um the list goes on and on and on and on and fortunately we got to participate in an event called yeah the list goes on and on and on you need to advocate for paid child care paid maternity leave paid paternity leave higher wages i mean it's not just the systems that help kids it's the systems that help people so that's why i think that you are for kids inside the womb so yeah one day la we're at this one day la over twenty thousand people just got to go and serve and love the city they got to eliminate millions of dollars in medical debt and furnish um homes where kids were literally getting taken by their parents because they didn't have furniture just for the simple things and, and families got to stay together instead of getting their kids put into foster systems and just clean up the city and serve the homeless community and i mean the list goes on and on and on and this isn't just a one day thing they're wanting to do this in so many cities across america and you're thinking wow i want to get involved with that and i feel like it all starts with just a question of why don't we have this how can we do this and in fact every solution starts with a question why don't we have this because we don't prioritize it and we don't vote for politicians and they don't even really exist politicians that want this kind of thing this is why if you care about your nation start with your local community start with your local elections because that'll tell you a lot about what the lives of people who are impoverished around you are that that's actually going to be you advocating for them is you voting in your local elections for people who are voting to uphold the systems in place the county programs in place that are helping those people like myself you know so ask the question get it started we just want to encourage you to click the link below and get involved with all the resources with embrace grace don't be afraid it's nothing to be ashamed of they're there to love you we're here to love you we just want to help we learned so much in the making of this documentary and obviously we have so much more to learn we hope that this is only just a start just a ripple effects we don't know what's to come from it there's so much more um that we can personally do that i know you watching can do mm-hmm. um, i feel like our nation just loves to divide us you're either this or you're this but i just want to start a conversation and just be like you're not starting a conversation you didn't even have like the the you had like a small amount of people who agree with you and uphold what you already believe and created this little echo chamber 38 minute long video instead of asking doctors like dr jennifer gunter dr willie parker instead of asking your local planned parenthood or other clinic asking a practicing OBGYN, asking a woman who's had an abortion recently asking a pregnant teen like you didn't you didn't ask people. This is not a conversation. This is this is you like like tooting your own horn and 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 recycling what you already believe. This is ridiculous. What can we both do? How can we both get more involved to rally around these women and to help them and to love them and to serve them better? So while we were in Texas, we sat down with Israel Jones, who actually went through with an abortion to later find out a few months later that she's now having this miracle baby. And it's just one of the most insane stories that we've ever heard. Yeah. And something that you have to hear for yourself. Yeah. Um, this is not the first story I've heard like this. I am always kind of skeptical of these because there's always like red flags in them. So we'll see. I mean, the problem again is that we have not heard from so much of the medical community, so many stories of people who their life circumstances would not be helped by these people or what is it called saving grace or whatever Uh, the problem is that we have like (laughs) we have seen so little and yet they have come to the conclusion that it's like abortion is not necessary it's like oh my god this is so stupid Uh, i started dating this guy that i was very much in love with and um he you know we got pregnant um his response was just like oh well it's 2020 you know like we can't do this you know um we can't have a baby right now 
he was just like, well, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. You know, I'm gonna leave the decision up to you and everything. But we weren't even fighting or anything. He just got up and left, just left. Mm -hmm. And I was heartbroken. Like I went ahead and made the rash decision. Like, you know, I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna just get it over with. And I don't wanna think about it. I just wanna get it over with and get back to what I was doing, get back to life. You know, mm -hmm. I followed through with the Planned Parenthood stuff. And I did attempt an abortion. Um, they gave me the pill and, you know, I went home, they sent me home to do this abortion by myself, which I was like, wow, I gotta go home and deal with this, you know, on my own. Um, yeah, I think this, oh, this feels calculated. Um, here's the thing. Yeah, that is what happens. So the abortion is typically two pills um, for a miscarriage. It's just the, the second pill. So in an abortion, you take first pill, which is to cut off progesterone, which essentially ends like life support, I guess you could call it. To It doesn't allow the pregnancy to continue. It, it cuts off any sort of um, nutrients and, and yada yada from reaching the uh, fetus and therefore the pregnancy cannot continue. Now, my body did that naturally. It ended my pregnancy as uh, viability naturally. And so pregnancy pregnancy was already over in my body, right? When I went for my um, ultrasound, they were like, this pregnancy is not viable, but your body still thinks you're pregnant with a viable fetus. So you need to end this pregnancy because you're at risk for infection. So what they did was they gave me the second pill that you take in a, an abortion. So what that does is contracts your uterus. So what happened at Planned Parenthood, what, what happens is that she would have taken the progesterone blocker at Planned Parenthood and then got and been sent home to take the pill that would contract her uterus, right? Which is what they did for me. They sent me home to do that. That's or she could have taken the other option, which is a surgical abortion with the little vacuum tube. So I don't I don't know why she's talking about it as if that's like weird or scary because that's really normal. That's how the majority of abortions are performed. That's how a lot of miscarriages are, are dealt with, that ones that aren't uh, passing on their own, like my second one wasn't. I don't like the way that it's being talked about because it feels very misleading. And like they said, this video is for teenagers, right? So you have just given bad medical opinions to teenagers, just like CPCs do. Anyway. Um, so that night I had an abortion, you know, I lost something. Um, but, and then shortly after that, I, my body was like trying to heal, you know? So three months went by, I was working and everything and all these weird changes were happening with my body. I finally was like, I need to go to the hospital and just see what's going on. So I did. And um, I told them everything that happened and they put a little ultrasound on me and they said, looks like you got a five month old baby in you. And I'm like, what? How? Like how? That, that's not, like, I was just blown away. Uh, I don't think they said, looks like you've got a five-month-old baby in you. They probably did an ultrasound, measured it, uh, measured the fetus, and were like, it looks like it would be about uh, XYZ weeks gestation. So I love the manipulative language. Though. And um, I, I felt so shameful. You know, I felt so guilty. I am just so blessed to have this beautiful daughter. Um, she's so perfect. And I literally cried tears of joy when she came out of me. Like. I couldn't believe how beautiful she was, how perfect she was. I was so stressed out and worried because I was like, oh my God, I took this pill. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, what if my baby's like, something wrong with my baby, you know? But God, he just made her perfect. I know that when she grows up, she's gonna know that she was meant to be here and that she's loved and that I didn't want her, you know? And like I said, God heard my prayer and he redeemed me, you know? He was like, you know what, you are worthy, you can do this. Insane baby fever. Your grace will be enough. He's so cute, huh? My eyes can see. After just holding her baby and being around her and hearing her story, she was just a total miracle. And it's crazy just to see the miracle in person. Yeah. You'll see the grace that he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Oh, not live action. Well, that was. Uh and ended very abruptly comments are turned off because this is <laughs> for kids apparently um well that was wildly uncomfortable let me guess the links below are yep live action there it is um okay well that oh they they did link to Shanice's bath bombs that's dope uh I'm, I'm gonna do the same so that was uh manipulative <laughs> Uh, that was, oh man, that was, uh, yikes. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. That was yikes. Um, it was very manipulative. There are other documentaries that, uh, exist on, uh, I will put up some documentaries that I have watched on the subject, uh, both of birth and abortion and, uh, crisis pregnancy centers. There's a few, there's so many good books on this. There's, there's so much information out there. If you just like look for it, this is a 38 minute documentary that a documentary that does not cover even like a quarter of what it should have covered. 
they never even brought up the most common way to have an abortion, which is the pill. I just This is so stupid and manipulative, and I feel bad for any teenager that watches this and is going to have to do the work of unlearning every bullshit thing they learned here. Anyway, that's it. Uh, leave your comments and questions down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.